Congrats to Christopher Nolan's Oppenheimer on winning the best picture at Golden Globes and to all of us for that matter who admire historical epics. There is still appreciation for the genre and if all goes well for Ridley Scott's Gladiator 2, we can expect more money and talent thrown in that direction. I would even speculate that either it wants it or not, the sequel carries potential to become genre's second renaissance or in case of a failure, responsibility not to become its last agony. Hey, I'm Robin, I love history, but I'm bad at watching movies, so here we talk about historical film and TV. It's not a secret that there is the 20-year rule in revival of certain trends in fashion, music, cinema, and other arts. Hey. Add to that couple of years of pandemic and couple of strikes in the movie industry and we are arriving at the moment when those juicy 2000 influences can make a comeback. All we need is a catalyst, so can Gladiator 2 be that one? Scheduled to release on November 22nd this year, it's still in a pretty decent shape to do so if things continue to go smoothly for production. An accident happened in Morocco last year aside. The sequel will have the same production and costume designers as the original and Mr. Scott teams up yet again with the writer of Napoleon David Scarpa, which is not necessarily a bad thing. If two folks like creating together, why not let them? Potential is limitless. The film itself will cover the events that happened a couple of decades after Maximus' death and directly will follow Lucius, the nephew of Commodus. Lucius will be played by Paul Mescal, a promising 27-year-old Irish actor who is also totally capable handling physicalities of the role considering his former involvement with Gaelic football, which is not a sport for snowflakes. Joseph Quinn and Fred Hackinger are rumored to join him as Caracalla and Geta respectively, the two brothers and co-emperors of Roman Empire at the time. From the returning cast we will see Connie Nielsen and Derek Jacobi and the two big names attached to the project are Denzel Washington and Pedro Pascal, about whom just a bit later. To top it all off, there are more than a few images floating around that showcase a small Roman town constructed specifically for the film at Fort Ricasoli in Malta, and it is crowned with enormous scale Colosseum where we apparently will be entertained this time. So far so good, right? But there is no way this offspring will avoid comparison to the original, the one that started the avalanche. Just when we thought that movies about warriors in ancient Rome reached their peak with Spartacus and Ben-Hur, in comes Ridley Scott with Gladiator setting up the whole new bar for the production of historical epics that easily stand the test of time to this day. It also came with powerful but not overly complicated plot that plays on emotion simplicity, something that movies quite often struggle with, and something that gives all that glorious action that psychological padding it needs to make the big splash. And of course it has Oliver Reed, Russell Crowe and Joaquin Phoenix that absolutely destroy in their roles. And that's the film Gladiator 2 will be compared to. It's like having a celebrity mom and dad that are actually recognized for their craft and you choose to have the same career. It's a huge gamble for Ridley Scott despite his experiences and considering that we live in a very judgmental social media age. Besides all that, here's what I think can go wrong for Gladiator 2. First, a sequel curse. It's a thing. Hollywood just doesn't know how to keep things sacred. Yeah, there are some lucky examples that brought us a lot of joy and in some cases were even better than the originals, but majority of the remakes carry on them the mark of a cash grab and I'd say rightfully so. Second, an Oscar fever. Also a thing even though on a lesser scale. It's totally normal and it's human. Considering how this year turned out, Ridley Scott might be tempted to take an overcomplicated emotional route with overblown spectacles just for the sake of a grand action. Like I'm not saying he's gonna go all Namakia on us, but after seeing a couple of images from the sets, I wouldn't be surprised if he actually did. Third, the setting for the story. Two brothers ruling together, not getting along, living in two separate parts of the palace, meeting only in the presence of their mother and with a strong military guard. Geta eventually gets assassinated in his mother's chambers, dies in her arms, Caracalla persecutes and executes over 20,000 of Geta's followers and tries to erase his brother's name from history. Whew, that alone is worth eight episode miniseries. And that's just a most probable inciting incident for the story. Spend too little time on it, it might fall flat too much. You're running out of time for the main hero's quest. And finally, too many potentially important characters. Someone has to be the gladiator, right? Well, two options here I see. If Lucius is one, then he will be get a supporter, exiled or sold to slavery, coming back to revenge his mother's death, 
surrounded by newfound allies. On the other hand, Pedro Pascal is way too popular right now and he's more than proven his ability to lead giant projects while bringing certain gravitas and empathy to his roles, which is exactly what the main character needs. In that case, if something bad happens to Lucius, Pedro Pascal enters, compelled to seek revenge against Caracalla, thus becoming Maximus of the story. Fun fact, Caracalla was sent to the afterlife by a soldier Justin Martialis after the Emperor denied him a promotion. If Martialis is a prototype for Pascal's character and we follow history closely, then it's kind of dull and awkward situation for the screen since Caracalla was taking a bathroom break when that happened. And let's not forget about Denzel Washington, big name, great actor, most likely will have a meaty role in the film that needs a proper development and screen time. And all that requires a surgical precision when it comes to writing and editing. You can't just rely on director's cut and hoping it will be the case of Kingdom of Heaven. Mm -mm, not this time. All that being said, and considering that there will be titles like The Lord of the Rings, The War of the Rohirrim and Wicked Part 1 released around the same time, based on my brain capacity and maybe some intuition, I'd give Gladiator 2 65% chance of success, not exactly the odds to run around in a blissful frenzy or bet your life savings on it, but good enough to maybe start saving for a ticket. Obviously the odds are liquid and subject to change with the release of the trailer, so... Thanks so much for speculating with me and I'll see you in the next one.